The music virtuoso A.R. Rahman continues to transcend boundaries of religions, regions and languages. He continues to inspire us, entertain us, even enthrall us. There is an unmissable glimpse of meditativeness in all his melodies. How does he keep himself relevant and how does he create that magic? Let's find it out from Mr. Rahman himself. Thank you so much Hi. for joining us. First thing first, this is quite a hutke title, Chamkela. <laughs> uh, do thoughts run across your head when you see the title as opposed to the situations and the characters in the story? Mm. It's a storytelling thing. Like in cinema, you know, the wonder of cinema is to, uh, you also play the character. Mm -hmm. You also know what it is and then see how we can expand the storytelling. And, and of course, when you have the lead pair in your film, Parniti and of course Diljeet, they both are singers in yeah. their own right. So does that make composing for them easy? In this, uh, the story is about two singers, you know, got shot. Yeah. And uh, Amar Jodh and, you know, Chamkila. So it was necessary to have somebody who can really sing. Hmm. They, sa they sang live on the, okay. yeah, we had a band prepared for them and they were all recorded live. Okay. And uh, then the, all the recordings were cleaned up. Because here I think they're singing, they're talking, and the only way to do that is to have real singers. And then they did a tremendous job on that. Yeah. One of the teasers uh, of Chamkela has an interesting line which goes, Jab Samaj mein tanao bada jata hai, to logo ke andar ki bhook entertainment ke liye aur bhi bada jati hai. Mm -hmm. uh, do you agree with, with that sentiment? I, yeah, I think when true whatever is, uh, a society kind of needs that uh, there's a void. Somebody comes and fills it up. At, at that point of time when Shamkila was entertaining people, Punjab was going through turmoil. Mm -hmm. And maybe this was the kind of entertainment they needed to distract themselves from, you know, the kind of turmoil. <laughs> how, how do you transcend the boundaries of languages? Because language has, a, has been an integral part when it comes to creating any piece of art. Uh, right from down south to north, India is a continent in, in itself. It so while working on it, what do you learn as far as languages go? Yeah, I just finished a Malayalam film called Goat Life, and <laughs> then there's Punjabi, then there's Marathi happening now. Oh, great. Um, I think it's a trust when you have a director who knows the language and the lyric writer who knows. I get the feel of it, I get the energy. And the energy actually is very similar. Mm -hmm. Not similar, I would say, but if you know a little bit of the culture, and you've done your research, you just try to get the assistance of these people who who know, you know, have the hold of the language, like Punjabi, like Irshad Kamal and Imtiaz. And, and in a way, actually, it helps me to go more wilder than be very, like, oh, this is what I'm going to use. Hmm. So to take a little bit of a license, cinematic license in the, in the sound too. Yeah. There's an unmissable element of meditativeness in all your compositions. Uh, so sir, please walk us through where do, where do you get that perfect beat, that Eureka moment where method stops and magic starts working? I mean, if, if the character demands it, um, that's hardwired in all of us. Uh -huh. We always seek peace. We are all in chaos. We are all in distraction and constantly rammed with so much of information, videos, narratives. But we all want to go to that solace. We all want that moment of peace. We close your eyes. There's no peace at all. There's sound pollution, noise pollution, air pollution. You know, everything's happening. The only place I feel like is a solace which, which I can reflect is uh, if I have to experience it, I have to experience it and give it to people. Mm. So it's a constant uh, attempt to probably have something which they can latch on, where they can find solace. Uh, Chamkira has this underlying current of rebellion. At the same time, you are evoking nationalism as well, and you're known for doing that. Right from that fight for our land in Lagan to, to uh, Vande Matram and, and what you did in, of course, Swades. Uh, how do you evoke that emotion as an artist, as a composer, when it comes to defining nationalism through your compositions? I think from the beginning, Music unites people, and I think from the beginning, from Roja itself, it started. Even before Manisha wanted uh, Bharat Hamko, it was done as a song which I wanted to do, mm -hmm. but I didn't have a name at that time. 
So when he came in and we were doing all these four songs, he said, I have one more idea. Shall I play it to you? So it was Tamara Tamara. Okay. And uh, I wanted that as a kind of a lullaby for the people who got, you know. And that became Bharat Humko in, in Hindi. And maybe that kind of triggered uh, the energy in, you know, Mataji Salam and then in Lagan or, you know, in Subhash Chandra Bose or um, Bhagat Singh and the seas of Mangal Pandey. <laughs> True. <laughs> I think I became like, oh, anything nationality, anything about freedom fight, go to Aramon. But I also wanted to do fun subjects. Yeah. yeah. So after a while, I said, oh, enough of that. I mean, and stuff. But there is uh, what's inside you comes out as stuff. Mm -hmm. If you are even pretentious on any of those, it'll show. Absolutely. And yeah, but I, I think what stayed with people like, you know, stadium singing, Madhuri Salaam, or is fantastic how after even 25 years, that energy of that song is still retained. It's become like a youth anthem for Indian people abroad, India, everywhere. It's a kind of responsibility. And you're constantly comparing that is the song better than that? It can't be better because that's what it is. It can be different. Hmm. Yeah. You were mentioned the word abroad. I must ask this question to you. Uh, how do you see the evolution of Indian music and how the West is looking at us uh, through the prism of diversity, through the prism of the way India is evolving? Do you see any changes there in their perception? I, you know, when you go deeper, more than the music, it's a lot of marketing money. <laughs> okay. It is uh, India succeeding in the world economics, right? Indians now are big CEOs around the world. You take Sundar Pichai and Satya and all of, and there there is a leadership quality which everybody is adoring. Like that is fantastic. I think the next level would be uh, like how South Korea is marketing BTS, you know, as a as a national commitment. <laughs> like I think that all that should happen. I just found. I saw Anushka Shankar as a Rolex ambassador. Mm -hmm. That's a great statement to have a classical musician having a so You know, those things have to happen co constantly. You know, that will change perspective of our Indian classical music, our music. And then we don't have to even think people, uh, nothing succeeds like success. <laughs> right? And uh, of course, we're talking about. India going global and representation of Indian music on the global platform and nobody has achieved the kind of recognition awards and accolades like you have. So in that sense, where does the hunger now come from? And above all, how do you keep yourself nourished, nurtured and more importantly, relevant? Mm -hmm. Relevance comes from uh, the urge to, what do you call, I have a, I have a music school. We are mm -hmm. sitting in the music school here. And uh, I always feel like if I'm not successful, why should they come to this school? You know, I'm the example, and they look up to, to me. And if I become like dated, doing boring things, why should they come to the school? So, and when the students come out, they have their own identity. And this actually, I, I get inspired by seeing these young musicians come and I envy them because if I had that same facility when I was growing up, it would have been probably even better. It would have taken lesser time to evolve. And so that's the reason why I started the school, like to give people what they didn't, I didn't have, mm -hmm. you know, the kind of coaching and everything. The relevance comes from, uh, as a listener, I want to hear new things. And that, I place myself as a listener. I say, this is boring, I've done this before, let me do something else. Sometimes I'd, I'd do something, throw it out, come back again, you know, stuff like that. So what was that something else for Chamkila? Something else was, uh, we have heard Punjabi music, we know Chamkila's music, but uh, why should I do music for this movie? Mm -hmm. and, and then comes in, oh, you can do, because you've learned stuff from doing Broadway musicals and Western musicals, why can't we bring that energy into Punjab? where all the characters can sing about Chamkila, and that's something which I don't think many people have tried. Mm. So we discussed this in the beginning and said, what if all the characters sing? Like all the YouTube comments can become a song, <laughs> like that. Yeah. Um, so all the gossip became 
Baja mm -hmm. and and Vengad and you know Dharmakarja. And the very end also we could have done that, but we made it more personal with Arjit singing with that group. So. And of course, uh, Chamkila does sound very, very vibrant, very Chamkila, as, as the terminology says. Um, and of course, on this one, you're working with Imtiaz Ali once again. And it's shot coming there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is it like to work with him? Is that a, more of a comfort zone, or do you challenge yourself as well, even in that comfort zone? Uh, so when, when we have uh, a team which there's a lot of respect and trust, you don't want to betray them. You don't want to give them mediocre stuff. So I do something. I said, uh, I don't like it. Can I give you something else? If he shoots it, uh, when it comes back, I feel like, oh, you've done, you're filming, you filmed it beautifully. Maybe I should try something else because I think this could be even more better. So my relief of, oh, the director likes it enough. I'm going to move on. is not there with many people, actually. I, there is time I'll say, I don't like it, I can improve it, I'll change the rhythm, I'll change the voice, I'll do something else. And Time is the biggest blessing for me. If there's no deadline, I keep going on. Change the mix, so till I have to give it away. What have you set out to achieve with this one? Is there a goal there? Is there an inspiration there? Is there something that you must achieve as an artist with this one? Yeah, it's to probably uh, expand the whole sensibility of what this Punjabi you know, musical is about and give it a more broader appeal yeah. and still be relevant to the, the cultural aspects of it. Um, and have fun. <laughs> Main thing is you can see that there's a director who's jumped into a real story. Usually he has his own stories. First time he's taken a story which is true mm -hmm. and he's reinvented himself in narrating that stuff. So I'm also part of the journey, so it's great. So my last question, the way the industry is evolving, the kind of subjects we are toying with across the world, in India especially, the way OTT is evolving, et cetera, et cetera, where do you see the music landscape going, evolving and giving us fresher ideas? What, where are we on the trajectory? I personally feel that there should be more live entertainment, live theater, like, like Broadway. So, you know, using all the talents which are emerging in every street, there's amazing singers out coming on. But where are they going after that? They're just putting a cover on TikTok or Instagram. After the, what's the future of them? Why can't we consolidate up, culminate all these people and make a statement? Mm -hmm. Like a big choir or a musical theater group or multiple musical theater thing happening. So there's a sense of pride with everybody involved. Oh, my daughter's paying this cost, like how, uh, Broadway is or West End is. And so I feel like that change has still not happened. We have one, Neetaji has built this beautiful thing. Mm. Because every, every state should have one. Yeah. And so that we can do world class stuff and people come watching as a tourism. They come to see the culture of Orissa or Karnataka or Kerala or, or Tamil or Punjab. Where, you know, every. Every place, even uh, you know, when I do, went to Bali or I went to Thailand, these, they have world-class entertainment showing the culture. Uh, I don't see that here, <laughs> the way it could be, hmm. because we're leading in everything. Uh, individuals are leading the country in all over the world, and that should change. That will only happen as a mass movement, I think. But I think now our people are ready, uh, talent-wise and to pay the tickets and watch. Chamkila is certainly looking vibrant and is sounding even more vibrant. Thank you. He is hoping you achieve what you want to achieve with this one and continue to entertain us, inspire us like only you do. Thank you. God bless you.